What's up guys, I'm Matt Gary, and on this seventh episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Common Tutorial series I'm doing, we're going to go over the service layer. Alright guys, so welcome to the seventh episode of this Apex Common Separation of Concerns tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to go over the service layer, what it is, the difference between it and the domain layer, why you'd want to implement it, all those kind of things. Um, yeah, so let's get started. I'll first explain, just like with every other video basically, <laughs> why you would care to learn about the service layer and why you'd care to implement it in your org. Um, the reason that you'd want to implement a service layer is because you want a, ideally anyway, you would want kind of a, a place to store your business logic, right? The service layer is the layer in your org that holds your business logic for the different application areas in your org. Think about it this way. Uh, a lot of the times what I end up seeing is you've got a controller. And in that controller, you've got, for some reason, a lot of business logic. Um, so, you know, your Lightning Web com component calls that controller. That controller within it actually runs some business logic and does whatever you need to do and then maybe inserts records or whatever. That's fine in the beginning. Right, you know, if it's if it's a brand new org and you do that once, um, maybe it's no big deal. But in the future, you might need that exact same business logic to be run somewhere else. Right? It can be, um, you know, anything. I don't know. Maybe you have an opportunity service in your org that builds complex opportunities uh, for your salespeople. Um, if you put all that logic into a controller, then you have to call a controller, which isn't, you know, typically controllers aren't necessarily bulkified. They can't handle a bunch of different scenarios, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so you're either calling a controller, which is less than idea, ideal, or you're rebuilding that business logic in a bunch of different controllers or places, batch classes, who knows, in your org. And really you don't want your business logic to live in multiple places because over time it gets hard to maintain, right? Say you have the same business logic in <clears throat> 15 different controllers. Well, that's not great. If the business logic changes, which it does all too often, you've now got to go to 15 different controllers and update that. Well, the way to offset that is through the use of a service layer, right? So you bring the service layer into your org and you kind of just have this centralized business logic repository for each of your, you know, I guess service, uh, application service areas in your org. So <clears throat> now your 15 controllers can all just call to this service layer class instead of you having to update every single one individually, every single controller individually. Makes things a lot easier in the long run. So as far as why you want a service layer, <clears throat> it's because you really ideally would like a centralized hub kind of for your uh, for your business logic, for your for your different applications in your system. <clears throat> So um, now that we kind of know why you want a service layer in your org, ideally, a lot of people get confused between what the service layer is supposed to be and what the domain layer is supposed to be. And I think this is a lot less confusing than people make it out to be. I just like to think about it this way because <clears throat> I think this is easier for people to understand. The domain layer 
is like <clears throat> a fancy trigger handler. Okay, it's on a the domain layer is on an object by object basis. It represents the behavior of a single object in your system, a single table. You know, if you weren't in Salesforce. So, the domain layer encompasses both your trigger actions and object specific behaviors. <clears throat> so what do I mean by object specific behaviors? Maybe your objects create tasks in a specific way, right? Um, so you'd have a task creation method or something on your object. And that's an object specific behavior. <clears throat> um, the service layer is different. The service layer is where it's typically a cross object situation, right? You've got a, well, we'll just do the one that's right in front of us. I know I keep referencing it throughout this series, but I really think this is an easy one to grasp your mind around, in my opinion. Um, say you have the need to create tasks from a variety of places across a variety of objects, right? You could make a task service, okay? And the task service, like the one in front of us, could be called from anywhere to create tasks for any object right so this service the act of creating a task is um is basically a cross object service right so this service could be used by technically hundreds of objects in the system if i wanted to now does this eventually call a domain layer to create the tasks based on the object specific behavior for creating tasks? Yes. Um, down here we eventually call uh, using our object domain the create task method on the actual domain. But uh, I know this class is confusing. Hopefully if you've been following through the series it's maybe a little less confusing. But as you can see this this method in this task service class can deal with any object type. It's a cross object setup. Okay, so that's that's one of the biggest aspects of the service class. Um, it's not typically, although it can be, but typically. Um, well over, at least in my experience, like 80% of the time. Uh, it's a cross object uh, class. So, you know, it's a, it's a class that can handle multiple objects uh, for a specific like service application area in your org. <clears throat> Maybe you, again, have some complex opportunity um, opportunity creation logic where it goes out and creates <clears throat> um, automatic in certain scenarios it automatically creates quote quotes quote line items or whatever else right and a bunch of different scenarios can trigger that well you might still have some object specific domain layer stuff on your opportunities object but that service, because it's kind of um, cross object oriented, would, uh, sorry, that class, because it's cross object oriented, would be become a service layer class, right? Um, I know it's kind of confusing, but let's just keep it simple. Domains represent individual object behavior and their triggers. Um, 
service layers represent uh, basically <laughs> they represent business logic but on a broader level than on an in individual object by object basis right it's it's typically a cross object scenario uh, a service is normally a bit more abstract sometimes you can send in lots of different objects like you can see here in the task this task service I've built so um, they're two very different things, uh, even though people seem to get them very mixed up and confused, and con they're concerned, why, why do you need one? Uh, or why do you need both? Why can't you just use one? So hopefully that clears it up a little. I know it's a confusing concept, but the more that you, you start building these things out, the easier it is to kind of see the difference between a service and a domain layer um, class. All right, so what's the next important stuff I should go over? I guess we should go over the fact that unlike a domain layer and a selector layer in the unit of work, the service layer, there's, there's nothing pre-built for the service layer. Nothing ever could be pre-built for a service layer uh, class, right? This this service layer class it represents your business's specific logic right there's there's no way that anybody could build a you know library or framework to help you with that really um now that i mean there's a handful of things that that the apex common uh, library does to make well, the service factory in particular, useful. But I guess what I mean is this task service implementation class, that's what impulse stands for, it doesn't extend anything like, like this domain class, this cases domain class, right? Uh, in the, you know, uh, Apex Common Library, all of your other domains are going to extend, or sorry, all of your other layers are going to extend another class. And that's just not the case for the service layer. There's nothing, there's no pre-built functionality you could build for this because every single org is going to have different services and every service is going to be unique. Um, even if 30, or 400 different orgs had task service implementations for a service layer, their business logic would be completely different, more than likely. So there's nothing you can do to, like, you know, prep or make this any easier. Um, and we'll go over you know, how, how to leverage the um, FFlib application service factory in the next, in the next video a little bit. But outside of this service factory, which only kind of comes into play with the service layer, um, you know, there's nothing else that's, that's prepped here. There's a couple other things that are worth going over. Um, service layers should always use with sharing. You know, don't use inherited sharing. Don't use without sharing. Um, these should always operate in in user context, this is business logic. You want your business logic to operate with your business sharing setup, right? You, you don't you don't typically want this to operate without sharing. And the off chance that you do want this to operate without sharing, basically what you'll want to do is create a private inner class in here. So you'd make a private, I don't know, task service impul um, I don't know system sharing or something like that class and um, <clears throat> let's see without sharing and did I do something wrong? Am I crazy? Uh, without sharing, 
Oh, 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 wow, Matt. That, um, just pretend I didn't do that. Um, okay, so you basically create a, you know, a, an inner class in here that you could call to to run your elevated methods in your different situations. So if you wanted, if you actually had a real need, like say for instance, you needed to, I, I don't know, you needed to find the distance between um, an account a user has access to and all of the other accounts in the system, like what's the next closest account or something and return it to them um, on a map or whatever, then you could build a method in here that allows them to elevate their sharing temporarily. So it'd be, you know, like, uh, oops. yeah, public void, uh, get all accounts or something. And uh, then from your, from your class in here, you'd basically just call you know, task service impl system sharing. You know, maybe dot get all accounts, right? And in that way, you could, you know, in your specific business logic scenarios where you needed elevated sharing, you could do that and you could do it in a really safe way. Um, you know, you're not allowing other people to call this class you are only allowing your logic to execute code in this class if you need it to right so if you ever need elevated sharing like for a real reason uh, for instance that example that i just gave was a real example there was a um, mapping application that i built a mapping service for and I needed to be able to grab all accounts for the map to be able to display them on this on this map. Um, so that's how you would do that, right? Now, now no other place can call this except for your code, you know, in whatever logical sense it needs to call it. Um, <clears throat> let's see, something else. Oh, right. Um, your service layer class, typically, I would say um, over 90% of the time, probably nearly 100% of the time, in, in my opinion. I mean, it's not perfect, but you know, somewhere around there is pretty much the only place where you should be committing work. And what I mean by that is, you know, if, if you didn't watch the unit of work, videos and you're here um, basically when you call this commit work you are doing a DML transaction uh, of some sort so basically the only places that in place that you should be doing DML transactions are in the or is in the um, service layer now occasionally you actually have a use case for this in the domain layer but that's really it don't start doing these transactions in controllers. Don't start doing them anywhere else. In your service layer, you should be committing your work almost all the time. No, nowhere else, ideally. Um, again, that's not perfect, but but uh, yeah, that's that's it. Those are the two major things. Um, there's a handful of other things that I go over in the wiki article, like class naming conventions and method names and method parameters. Oh, another important thing to note about the service layer is, as you can see, this is, um, well, it's kind of bulkified. Uh, all, all of your methods in the service layer should for sure, um, unless there is a very good reason and justification not to do it, be bulkified. Um, and that's just because you don't know what's gonna be calling the service layer in the future. Uh, right now, it could just be a controller that's passing one record ID to it, but in the future, it could be a batch class that's passing, you know, 3,000 record IDs to it that it needs to, to handle. So make sure that your methods uh, that you create encourage, uh, well, number one, are bulkified, but um, 
allow for uh, operations with, with lots of records, right? Because who knows what could be calling this? Uh, it could be a domain layer class. It could be a batch class. It could be a service class, or sorry, a uh, controller class. You just don't know. Um, and it's best to prep for that in the future. Um, OK, I think that's pretty much all the important stuff about the service layer. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask me in the comments, all that kind of stuff. I will do my best to answer them um, as fast as I can. Uh, and, you know, uh, additionally, like I, I mentioned previously, I do have a huge wiki that goes over the service layer, how to implement it, all, all that kind of stuff that has uh, quite a bit more detail than this video. Um, so feel free to go check that out. There's also blog posts. If you prefer to read blog posts, go check those out too. Um, yeah, that's it. In the next video, we're going to go over how, when you're using the Apex Common Library anyway, to implement the task, um, or wow, task, the service layer, or your service layer classes. Um, yeah, so if you want to know how to implement service layer classes when using the Apex Common Library, stick around. The next episode is going to go over all that wonderful stuff. All right, guys, that is it for this one. Hopefully it helped a little bit, and uh, I'll see you next time.